right, today is uh, Thursday, September 6th, 2012. It's currently 1500 hours, 3 p.m. We are at the DeKalb County Sheriff's Department. Uh, I am Detective Dan Hoffman with the Sycamore Police Department. Present in the room is... Brian Hanley with the Illinois State Police. And your name, sir? Christopher Diaz. Chris, uh, what is your date of birth, Chris? 10-15-91. 715 of 91. 1015 91. 1015 of 91. Okay. Okay, Chris, before we get started, we're going to read you your Miranda warning, okay? Okay. Uh, you have the right to remain silent. Anything you say can be used against you in the court or other proceedings. You have the right to talk to a lawyer for advice before we ask you any questions and have him during questioning. If, you're not can't, if you cannot afford a lawyer, one will be appointed to you free of cost before questioning. You understand these rights and you're willing to talk to us today? Yes. Okay. What I also uh, want to stress is um, this is being audio and video recorded okay. and you're, we, we have your consent to do that? Yes. Okay. And since it's being audio and video recorded, we just, uh, we, we want to express that you need to speak loud and clear so that the video and will pick up your voice. Okay. Okay. Um, now, w what we want to start off with is um, you sent the DeKalb State's Attorney, Clay Campbell, a letter, correct? Yes. And is this a copy of the letter that you sent him? Yes, it is. Okay. If, if you could, can you, uh, can you just read that, that letter that you authored? Yes. This on the date of uh, August 4, 2012. This is to the state's attorney, Clay Campbell, on the date of uh, on the third of August at about the hours between seven and nine p.m. Excuse me, one one minute. Um, what is the date on the on the letter? The date is on the fourth. The fourth of August or the fourth of September. This on. Uh, this on oh yeah sorry it's September okay yeah. I'm sorry go ahead and start over please okay on September fourth I sent this letter to the state's attorney Clay Campbell on September third at about the hours between seven and nine p.m. I overheard Jack McCulloch in my cell uh, G one talking to Matt Raymond about his case. Jack told Matt that he strangled a girl with a wire and held her in his bedroom for some time. Then he said he ran through an alley when taking her. I didn't hear more at that time because I didn't want to seem interested. But I did hear him say, Jack, say that he never sold his car with the fire stripes, but he's saying he did. He talks to Matt a lot about his case and he's worried about going to prison. Okay, that concludes the, the, the letter? The letter. Okay, we'll leave that there. Now, uh, did anyone uh, ask you to send this letter to the DeKalb County State's Attorney's Office? No, no one did. Okay, and did you write that letter and you sent that letter to the State's Attorney Clay Campbell? Yes, I did. Okay, were you contacted by the police or... Uh, the prosecuting attorneys or any anyone in law enforcement um, t to ask you to write this letter? No. Okay. You wrote this letter on your own and in your own words, correct? Yes. Okay. The information in the letter came from who? From Jack. Okay. Um, and then how long have you been in custody? In Two Kel months. Two months. And what block are you in right now? Uh, G block. Okay. And how long have you been in contact with uh, Jack? Almost two months. So you guys are in the same uh, G block, correct? Yes. Okay. Uh, and uh, have you ever had, uh, you specifically have ever had conversation with Jack? Uh, yeah, I talked to him. He tried to talk to me about his case, but I tell him I'm more worried about my case. And he just walks away. Okay. Now, when you say he tries to talk to you about his case, what what does he try to talk to you? And what what does he try to say to you about his case? He just tells me that he's gonna win it. That the state's attorney has nothing against him. That he has so many witnesses. That that he didn't do it. 
and they could uh, talk for him. Okay. Does he mention any witnesses as far as the state that the state has or, or anything? Uh, he says that there's uh, uh, somebody that's going to testify against him. And he seems kind of worried, but not really. And who who is this somebody? Who? Uh, this is uh, Kurt Swaggerty. Okay, and, and what is he? He's an uh, inmate in, uh, person right now. Okay, okay. And um, is that the only person that he's mentioned? Yes. Okay. Besi besides this, uh, this other lady who's like 60 years old. But he never mentioned her name. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Um, so now, when when you've been in custody, have you ever had access to TVs, magazines, newspapers, or anything of that nature? Just TV. Uh, we just watch like shows. Okay. Now, before you said you've been in in custody for the last two months. Yes. Um, before you. Um, were arrested and, and brought to the DeKalb De County Jail. Were you aware of this of this case in Sycamore here? No, I was not. You were not? You, you didn't see it on TV or read it in a newspaper or anything? No, I didn't. Okay, so the first time that you were made aware of this was, of this case was when? When I uh, first got here and uh Cal County Jail, and I went into G Block. Okay, how how were you made aware of it? Well, uh, one of the inmates, I don't know, I don't remember his name. He told me if I knew who Jack was, and I was like, no, I don't know, I got no idea. And that's when he told me that he was here for murder for killing a little girl. And that's when I was just like, wow, like you know, surprised, like oh, you know. Okay. Now, when you describe, now, uh, Mr. McCullough's in the same G block as uh, with you, correct? Yes. Okay, is that, can you describe the G block? Is it, is it a big block? Is, is it small? Is, how, how would you describe the G block? It's pretty small. It's got four cells. I'm in uh, cell one. Then there's these other two guys who are in cell two. And this other guy in cell three, which is a single bed, and then Jackson cell four, which is a single bed too. So. Okay, so there's four cells in the G block. Yes. Okay. Now uh, you uh, you heard this this conversation between Jack and and whom? Uh, Matt Raymond. Okay, and he was he your cellmate? Yes, he was. Okay. So where did this conversation that you over, where did this take place? In my cell. In your cell? Okay. And uh, who, who was in your cell while this conversation was taking place? It was me. I was laying in my bunk listening to music, and then Matt Raymond was on top of the, on the second bunk. Was, and then he was talking to Jack. Jack was standing, like, on the wall by the toilet. And he was describing his case. Okay. Now, did was there a possibility that anybody else could hear this, or? Uh, no. No, nobody else would have heard this conversation. No, nobody. Okay. Um. Was this one specific conversation, or was this a series of more than one conversation? Uh, more than one conversation. Okay. And. How many conversations in total do you think took place? Uh, like about three or four. Okay. And what under what time frame did this take place? Uh, your letter that you wrote is dated September 4th. When did these four conversations take place? It started on, like on September 1st to September 4th. Okay, so the information that you are providing to us occurred over a, a period of days, of yes. three or four days. Yes. Okay. Okay, on that, uh, just to elaborate on what uh, Detective Dan uh, was saying, on, on the first, what, what, what was the conversation that happened on September 1st? 
he was saying, he was describing about, he was giving the little girl, the victim, a piggyback ride. Then this other girl who was there went inside the house and to go grab her mitts. And that's when Jack ran down an alley with the little girl on, on his back. Okay, and and so then the conversation either stopped or you didn't hear the rest? Yeah, I didn't hear the rest. Okay. And then the next conversation that you overheard took place when? That was like around the September 2nd. Okay, and that was where? That was in my cell again. Okay, and, and what was the conversation was, on September 2nd? It was him saying like, he had the girl in her, in his house in his bedroom for some time, and his mom knew about it. After that, I walked away. I came back, came to grab some water, and then I overheard him say that he strangled the little girl, the victim, like with the wire. He made the motion like this, like strangling her with the wire. He didn't describe what kind of wire or where he strangled her. Okay, and did he, so, and then that's on September 2nd, that was all that you heard on that day? Yes. Okay, and then on, uh, now we go to September 3rd, you also hear a conversation between Mr. McCullough and Matt? Yes. And that took place where? In my cell again. In your cell again? And what was the contents of that uh, conversation between the two? He was talking about how people think that the car, there was a car involved and people think that uh, he, he didn't have the car at that time. But he's, he's saying to Matt that he did. He, he described the car that had uh, fire stripes or fire flames on it that he painted on his own. Because he said back then it was like, you know, like, some everybody will do it, have on their cars like fire flames. Mm -hmm. and, and and when you say that um, that pe people think that people don't think he had a car, then what? Why? Why did he, Why did he say that? What? Well, because he's telling people. People ask him, so then you had a car. He just tells people no, kind of to like you know, fool them, trying to like you know, get him off his case, you know. Mm -hmm. Now, did he no. ever? Did he ever say what, what he said he did with his car? No, he didn't. Okay. I didn't hear that. But he said he he said he still had his vehicle. Yes. Okay. And how did he get the flames on his car? Uh, he painted on it on it because uh, he studied art in college. He'd be doing some drawings in in the cell block in G block, and then he said to Matt Raymond that. He painted that on there, on his car, fire, flames, fire stripes. Okay, so he said that he did it himself? Yes. Okay. Uh, how do you know he studied art in college? Uh, he told me that. Okay. Did he say what else that he had done to the victim? You, you had indicated that um, he had gone down an alley with a, with a girl on his back? Yes. And then you stated that... At some point, he and the girl were at his house? Yeah, his house in the bedroom, that's where he kept her. Okay. And you indicated at some point that he uh, strangled her? Yes. Okay, is there anything else that he indicated he had done to her? He hit, he hit her in the head with some, I don't know, he, he just said something. He lied. He's like, that's not important. That's what he said. He said something and hit her in the head, and the girl's head was intact, which means that the skull wasn't fractured. You can see the skull, but it wasn't fractured. Okay. He said that you could actually see the skull? Like, you, you can see it, but, it, like, it wasn't, like, like fractured or nothing. Okay. Okay. Now, um, you, you mentioned in the, uh, the letter about his his vehicle, and and we went over that already. But um, he 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 specifically told you that he still had his car 
Yeah, that's what uh, he told Matt Raymond. That's what I heard. That's what you heard? Okay. And um, in the letter also, you say that uh, that he's worried about going to prison. Yes. Uh, now, did he did he say that to you, or um, is that what you overheard? That's what I overheard him telling man, saying that he's worried about going to prison. He talks to man about how prison is and everything, and he's just scared because. He knows what happens to people that kill little girls or women, so he's scared. He's not trying to go to prison. Okay. Now, when when he mentioned the people that are coming to to testify to court, um, you you mentioned a uh, Kirk Swaggerty. Yes, Kirk Swaggerty. Um, did he mention anything to you about him, or? He just told me that he was a snitch that he shouldn't be able to come over here and testify against him. And he asked me and Matt Raymond personally if what happens to snitches and we don't want to discuss that. We're like, we don't know, you know. He's like, well, can you guys do something to him? We just said, no, we, we're not trying to get no trouble. We're trying to get out of here. <laughs> now, when uh, he said, can you guys do something to him? Is that what he said? Yes. He did he elaborate? I mean, what, what exactly did he say? He said, can you guys do something to him, like send people after him or, you know, beat him up? Like me and, and, and Matt were like, nah, like, like we, don't, we don't do that type of stuff. Did he say why he wanted you to do that? So he won't come and testify, so he will be, so he'll be scared, like intimidated. Okay. Now you you also mentioned um, uh, the the uh, the sixty year old lady. Yeah. That's coming supposedly coming. Who who did he mention a name or with that or he didn't just... mention a name. He just said it was the other little girl that was there that went and grabbed the mints at her house and he I think she's coming to testify against him or he already did, or she already did. Okay. Okay. Did he mention anything about um, him, his family? He said the only person that testified, like, were miss his mom who passed away, and his sister who he referred to as a dumb bitch, because he said, I guess, she testified against him once already. Okay. So that's why he, he doesn't like her. Okay. Okay. And, um... Now, uh, along with this letter, uh, uh, Detective Hoffman has these notes that um, he will go over as well that you um, brought to our attention here. When we first started speaking with you today, you made mention of having some notes uh, in your cell, and you have retrieved those notes for us. I'm going to have you look at this. That is a copy. Can you tell us what that is? That's a copy of my notes that I wrote on September 1st, 2nd, and 3rd about what Jack described of his case to Matt Raymond. Okay, and what's on the second page? On the second page. That's uh, the last note uh, on September 4th about what Jack said when he returned from talking to his attorneys. Okay, if I could have you read the first page, please. Want me to read all of it? Yes, please. Okay. On the dates of first, second, and third of September, I wrote these notes. I heard Jack say he ran with the victim down the alley while carrying her on his back after the other little girl went inside to get her mitts. Jack had the victim inside his house, and his mom knew about it. I also heard Jack say he strangled the victim with a wire, and that he hit her in the head, but the skull wasn't dead. Jack told Matt he never sold a car with fire stripes on it. He just tells people that. Jack talks to Matt a lot about legal stuff and about prison because he's scared. So he wants Matt to protect him in prison. Also, I heard Jack say he's so angry at the state's attorney, Mr. Clay Campbell, that he would like to kill him. Okay, and the second page, 
if you could read that. And that's dated September 4th? Yeah, September 4th. Uh, Jack returned from talking with his attorneys and said the state's attorney offered him a deal and he said fuck that. He, Jack then went into cell one and started talking to Matt. Jack told Matt that the state's attorney has no evidence other than his mother who is dead and his sister who he called a dumb bitch and some little girl who he gave a piggyback ride to at his dad's father's house. As well, Jack said some snitch, Kirk Swaggerty, who is in prison. He, Jack, asked me and Matt, can we do something to this snitch? We said no. Okay. Now these notes, did you write these notes when you were in your cell? Yes. And were you writing these notes when you were listening to the conversation? Some of them I wrote when I was listening to the conversation. I was acting like I was drawing. Okay. What about the other notes then? The other ones I wrote after he finished talking to Matt Raymond and Jack left to his cell and Matt went out to the day room. That's when I started writing the notes. Okay. So, so all of these notes that you've written pertain to um, conversations you have overheard not conversations you had directly with Jack. Yes, conversations that I overheard. Okay. Do you have anything further? I don't think so. Um, well, I, I just want to um, make it clear that uh, no prosecuting attorney, law enforcement officer um, has been in contact with you and promised you anything by coming forward with um, your letter and these notes. I uh, know. That's correct? That's correct. Okay. So today uh, is the first time that you've spoken with law enforcement after you sent this letter on your own? Yes. Okay. All right, we're going to end our interview. It's currently uh, 3.22 p.m. Thursday, September 6th. We will be right okay, back. We'll be back. All right.